Okay, so the next bit we want to have a look at here is actually what this chapter is all about. Okay, and this chapter is about series, but to begin with, we want to learn a little bit more about something that is called sigma notation. Have you ever heard of the word sigma ever before? Yeah? You've heard of it? So sigma is this symbol that we've got here, okay? Um, and it's got some interesting properties, really. It's, it's a type of notation that allows us well, it's like all notation. It, it gives an instruction to the reader. And sigma notation is to do with summing things up, to do with adding things up. And there's a few things I need to tell you about this. First of all, this big symbol sigma actually means sum. So it means add up. Okay. The thing that we have at the bottom here is the starting number. And the thing that we have at the top is the ending number and then the thing that we have afterwards is the expression that all of this is going to be applied to okay now for sigma notation it is just going to be with these numbers that we have here it's the sum of the naturals natural numbers which i'll tell you a bit more about okay so this is actually saying you're only going to be inputting into this particular summation one, two, and three. If it was a different symbol, which is this symbol that we'll come across later on, this is also a summation where you have something that it starts with at the bottom and something it ends with at the top. But instead of just doing the integers in that range, it does every single number that is inside that range, which is obviously a continuous thing rather than a discrete thing. This is actually integration, and so these topics are kind of linked to each other in a, in a weird kind of way. If you don't know what integration is yet, um, that doesn't really matter. So we're only putting in the integers. You can never put in something that is not an integer into this. And what this actually means is you begin with your starting number and you substitute it into this expression, which is why it says that r is equal to 1. It doesn't say g or c is equal to 1. It has to match the letter that is inside the input expression that we've got here. So if I substitute r equals 1 into this expression, what would be the first number that I would get? 9. OK. Now the little ticker inside this is going to change from it being r is 1, and it's going to move on to r being 2. And we're going to sum it. We're going to add it onto this. So when r is equal to 2, what do we get? 14. OK. And then we're going to tick over to the next number, which is 3. And we get 19. And we are not going to tick over to the next number, because we've already got to 3. And 3 is the end of that little cycle that we've asked for this summation to happen in. We asked for it to start at 1, and we asked for it to end at 3. Inclusive. That means it includes 1, and it includes 3. And I'm making a big deal of that, because again, later on, that's important. Right now, you're probably like, OK, well, that's obvious but it's important that it includes them both. So this is it in symbols. This is it numerically. And when you evaluate this, evaluate means just give the answer, just add these up together. How much? 42, OK? 42. So we're going to do a couple more of these. Um, but before we actually move on, what we're, what we're going to try and do in the future is we're going to try and work out um, like shortcuts of how we can do them. How can we go from like this to this? Or instead of it being between 1 and 3, if it was between like 1 and 905, you're not going to want to do that in a slow way. You're going to want to do that in a quick way. OK, so for this next one that we've got here, um, we're going to substitute in 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 into this expression. It's going to take a long time, which is going to make us want to learn how to do it quicker. OK, so um, could you substitute in three, four, five, and then I'll do six, and then someone else can do seven. I'm doing three, right? Yep, three, four, five, six. OK. So what was when you substitute in? I'll come back to you in a second, Andrew, for three. What did you get when you substitute in four? 13. When you substituted in five? 27. When I substituted in six, I got 17. 
31. And, when, and for 7, it's 43. And when you substitute in 3, um, you, get seven. you get 7. Okay? So this is what it actually looks like as a summation. This is actually this maths. We have collapsed down into this expression just to make it look a bit neater. And then we just add those up and get an answer. Pardon? Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, what type of sequence is this? If we didn't have, this is actually a series because it's got things being added together. That's what makes a, a series is things being added. But if we had this sequence, what kind of sequence is this? It's a quadratic. What do you think the nth term of this quadratic sequence is? Uh, so n squared minus n plus 1. Yeah, that's the nth term, isn't it? So the nth term of this quadratic is this, but it's not quite the nth term of this quadratic, uh, this quadratic sequence. Can you perhaps tell me why this isn't quite? Mm, because it starts at 3. Good. This one, we started at 3, but normally we would start the sequence at 1. OK, so it's, it's related to it, but we've actually decided to start it at 3. You'd, if you wanted it to be the nth term, you'd probably have to do some adjustments. You'd have to write n plus 2 squared minus n plus 2 plus 1. Because then if you substituted in 1, you would get 7. If you substituted in 2, you would get 13 and stuff like that. So this is still linked to maths that we already know about. And yeah, if you want to, you can add these up on the calculator. But I'm actually 115. I'm not that bothered about the answer for this. I'm more bothered about like what's going on inside. If it's not 115, then it doesn't really matter. OK, so this last one that we've got here is the sum of the squares, okay? This is actually what we call the sum of the squares. And there's something interesting about this one, and obviously you can all spot that the difference here is there is no ending number. The ending number is n. And n we use in maths just to say, yes, yeah, some point. It's just like a, a position that we're not sure where that position is going to be. So if I wanted to try and write down what this would look like, this series, a series being a sequence but just being added up, a summation, what would it start looking like? What would be the beginning of this series? One, four, one nine, plus four, plus nine. Plus nine. Plus 15, plus 25, and then because I'm bored of writing this, I press, not press, I write plus, and I put dot, dot, dot. And then I do another plus to imply this has been going on for a long time. And what about if I wanted to do not the last one, but the one before the last one? What would it be, the one before the last one? N minus one squared, n minus one squared plus n squared. OK, so this is what this thing on the left-hand side here means. Starting from one, ending at n. And if you wanted to, you probably didn't even really need to have these bits in. You only need to have a couple of them. But we wanted to kind of show that we understood this one. It doesn't have to be R, but this is the most common letter that we tend to use for this. We tend to use N in the starting and ending numbers, and we tend to use R for the expression. It's just a tradition that seems to be used, which is weird because it's the other way around when we do nth term, isn't it? You use OK, everyone got that written down? OK. So what I'd like you to have a go at now is exactly the reverse of what we did on this previous page. Okay, so here we took the sigma notation and we decided to write it down as numbers. This time what I've done is I've given you the numbers and I want you to try and write it down using sigma notation just so I can check that you've really understood what sigma notation actually means. You're going to need to have, first of all, this symbol. You're going to need to have a starting number. You're going to need to have an ending number. And you're going to need to have an expression. Please make sure your expression is bracketed. Otherwise, it might look like the sum of r plus 3. So you might do that and then add 3. But if you want it to be the sum of r plus 3, you need to make sure that you're telling the notation what the input actually is. Okay? So I'll give you a few minutes to have a go at some of these ones now. Okay? <laughs> 